перевела я озвучила планета жизни на Земле. Подпишитесь на канал, нажмите звонок. Приятного просмотра. This tree has many blossoms and covers a large area in the eastern territories of their kingdom. It's the great tree, or trees, not too sure if this is one rockweed plant or several, that grows on the rock waterfall you guys have named the River Styx. The entire mountain is dominated by vegetation, but the Ember Islands as a paludarium has grown to look quite impressive and green. The floating mountains still look as majestic as ever, Every time I look at this paludarium, the grandeur of it all just takes my breath away. At ground level, the rock shelf is littered with the exoskeletons of past meals. The Phoenix Empire has been busy eating plenty. Oh, have a look at how strong this ant is. Lugging a huge piece of roach exoskeleton somewhere. A fellow sister coming along for the ride. Offering moral support, I guess. She places it down here. No clue why she chose this random spot, but it seems good enough a spot for both of them. The lands continue to get greener and greener over time. Check out all these carpets of moss that look like rolling fields of green. I planted little patches of Christmas moss in certain spots in the beginning, but most of this moss are totally different species and have seemingly popped out of nowhere. There are even baby ferns growing in certain parts of the territories. Here, 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 and there. Again, no idea how these baby ferns got here, but I'm guessing all these new and welcome vegetative growths were already embedded in the rock, in seed or spore form, and simply sprouted with ample moisture and humidity. I find they look great interspersed with the rockweed. But here's something I wanted to show you. The ants have managed to tunnel under this thick carpet of moss. See their entrance? They actually have several entrance points into this moss carpet. And I'm pretty certain the tunnels lead to the mother nest at Mount Vulcan. Now check this out, guys. Have a look at the pile of dirt they've built under Mount Vulcan, one of the floating mountains. And one thing you'll notice is the abundance of allies. Springtails. It does seem like springtails are like the rats of Phoenix Empire society. They eat and help break down the leftovers of the ants. But I do see some of the ants chasing them away when they get close. Though the fire ants don't particularly like them, the ants do actually need them to help keep the lands clean. Plus, the springtail's poop fertilizes the plants, so the springtails are indeed an important link in this mini ecosystem here. Over here, you'll see the ants working on a jelly cup. They truly love their sugar. Fire ants definitely have quite the sweet tooth. Now, in case you're wondering if the ants still occupy the upper areas of the paludarium, indeed, the fire ants have long mastered the floating mountains as they trail along the root system, connecting each mountain. They all now know the quickest route to get to whatever place they're wanting to get to. In terms of nesting in the mountains, it seems the ants are mostly nesting in Mount Vulcan. Check out the swarm that boils up to the surface the moment I come close. I think they smell me and have associated my smell with feeding time or just want to kill me, <laughs> one of the two. It's just incredible how wonderfully the ants have settled in to this massive paludarium kingdom, complete with aquatic life, plants, and weather system. But here's the thing. 
I know a lot of you out there watching might see a complex setup like this and think to yourself, oh man, this is way beyond anything I could possibly have, make, or maintain. And so, for those of you who love ants as much as I do, my team and I have tried to help make things much more simple for you. Do you guys remember how this fire ant colony started? They started with just a single queen ant in a test tube with a few babies. Then, the queen and her brood expanded to the point where they were eventually moved into their first ant farm. Now, I've got some great news for all of you wannabe ant keepers, or those who have been thinking about owning an ant colony, but are too intimidated to start. Trust me guys, ant keeping is very simple, fun, and super rewarding if you have the right equipment. So over at my website, AntsCanada.com, we launched our biggest sale of the year, the AC Holiday Sale 2020, where our top two ant farms for beginners are available at 20% off. You've seen me use these ant farms in our videos, and they were used to house the Phoenix Empire before we decided to go real big and move them into their massive paludarium. Well, even if you don't intend on going as big as our Ember Islands, both our AC Ant Tower Small and our AC Hybrid Nest Mini are excellent homes designed to house thriving pet ant colonies for a long time. And both these items of AC Ant Farm Tech are on sale until January 1st. So if you've been wanting something special to spoil yourself with for the holidays, or if you've been thinking of a wholesome gift for a nature-loving loved one of yours, be sure to visit my website antscanada.com today to grab one of these easy to use ant farms found nowhere else. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help or have any questions on how to use the ant farms. Plus, if you use the promo code ANTLOVEFOREVER2020, you get an Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook ebook, complete with care guides on specific commonly kept ant species, totally free, which you can add to your cart before checking out. Now you might be wondering, okay, but how do I get the actual ants to fill my ant farm? It's fall and winter soon where I live, and there are no ants anywhere outside. Well, if you're a late bloomer and didn't catch a queen ant this season, no worries. Just visit the Queen Ants for Sale tab on our website to look for ant colony sellers in your area. Chances are you'll find an ant colony to stock your ant farm with. But just a note, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the ants you'll be getting will probably be groggy and sleepy until spring next year, seeing as it is their hibernation season. So you may have to be patient to see the bulk of the ant action, which will probably pick up around February. But guys, you can start your ant keeping journey now. I hope all of you wanting to get into ant keeping do take advantage of this great opportunity to own your own AC ant farm today and keep ants with me. Oh, and I should mention that our AC Holidays promo is a limited time offer and ends January 1st and you need to order before December 17th if within US or December 10th if outside the US if you hope to receive your package before Christmas. Also, we currently have a limited supply of these AC ant towers and the AC hybrid nest minis and they're flying off the shelves of our warehouse location in the US. So I recommend you guys order soon before they're all sold out until next year. Tell mom and dad, tell your girlfriend or boyfriend, tell your teacher, your friends, or treat yourself to something extra cool this holiday season 2020. And head over to AntsCanada.com to place your order to own an AC ant farm. For me, keeping ants over the years has filled my otherwise mundane and or stressful days with wonder inspiration, excitement, and curiosity. Watching ants living out their best lives in their luxury setups I've set up for them has truly been so fulfilling beyond words, never boring, and I always seem to discover something new each time. I also find ants to be extremely human-like in many aspects. All of you AC family who've been watching this channel for a while or who have just been following the almost year-long journey of the Phoenix Empire here know exactly what I'm talking about. Ants are hands down some of the coolest pets ever. I do hope you guys out there watching consider building and keeping your own ant colonies at home and growing your ant empires from their humble beginnings to magnificence in an enclosure. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the ants. It's ant love forever.